All right, this is an interesting quote from Canelo Alvarez. It's from M. Wirt of Game. It says here, Canelo Alvarez, Canelo Alvarez believes that his career would have been even more successful if he'd have been with Al Heyman and PBC from the start rather than Golden Boy and Oscar De La Hoya. Interesting, I'll quote him here. He says, I think I would have done better with PBC, way better. I did good things with Golden Boy and I'm not mad with that but I think it would have been even better with PBC. All right, so Canelo Alvarez, well, let's, let's, let's dissect it a little bit. So obviously Canelo and Golden Boy, it's fair to say they don't best like one another. I think that's fair to say. I think it's very fair to say. Canelo and Golden Boy, mainly Oscar De La Hoya, but I would imagine the whole company as a whole, don't best like one another. And it is, I'm going to say it's unlikely, not that it's a guarantee it will never happen, because in boxing, it's not just the fights where strange things happen. Strange things happen with fighters who they sign with, who they manage them. I mean, if you had said to people after the David Hay, Derek Chisor incident over there in Germany all those years ago, that fast forward, what was it, seven, eight years later, that Derek Chisor and David Hay will be fighter and manager you know you'd have probably laughed if you had turned around and said oh Billy Joe Saunders is going to sign with Eddie Hearn even after his dad I think, didn't his dad offer him a dust up or something or he definitely was never complimentary of Eddie Hearn to say the least would you say that's likely you'd say no very unlikely so strange things happen in boxing and even when bridges get burned by fighter manager promoter etc 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 things can change and I'm watching this sport and been involved in this sport long enough. I say involved, like, but you know what I mean? Like, seeing things happen in this sport long enough to know that anything can really happen, whether it's in the ring or outside it. So, I would say it's extremely unlikely Canelo will work with Golden Boy again, but you never fully, you never know. In terms of him praising PBC and Al Heyman, he praised Eddie Hearn when he started working with Eddie Hearn. I think he said Eddie Hearn was the best promoter he'd ever worked with. And now he's saying, and he's not knocking Eddie Hearn by my notion of imagination there, but now he's saying that his career would have been even better if he'd have worked with PBC and Al Heyman. And PBC and Al Heyman are doing hardly any shows. I mean, they've done that Tank Davis show. They've done Fedora versus Zoo, which was a good card, to be fair. Actually, it was a pretty good card. Hmm. Oh, they obviously done Canelo versus Munguia, which was a co-promotion. Obviously, Munguia was with Golden Boy, and now they're doing Canelo versus Berlanga, which again is a co-promotion. Berlanga is obviously with Matroom. They're not doing a great deal. Now, Canelo, uh, Golden Boy did a great job with Canelo building his profile. And I think that regardless of the promoter, certainly if it was a major promoter, you could have, Canelo was always going to be a star. And he ended up being a star, and he's a tremendous fighter even still. So you're always going to have a good, you've got good bang for your book with Canelo, we'll say it like that. But what he's been doing with PBC, I mean, he's only had a handful of fights. He had the Caleb Plant fight, that was a one-off fight. I believe that was his first fight with PBC. Anyway, he had that fight. Then he went back to Matrium, fought Bivol, fought Golovkin, and then finished it with a fight against John Ryder, wasn't it? And then he signed for PBC and Al Heyman. I know Eddie Hearn were obviously trying to get his signature again but he went and he signed a deal I think this is a three fight deal with PBC and Al Heyman fights Charlo alright he's fought Munguia and now he's fighting Berlanga so he's fought Calaplant Munguia Berlanga and Charlo in four fights with PBC I mean how, how would you have done even like I mean seriously you know no disrespect to those guys and with the plant fight I know it was for undisputed fair enough Charlo, you brought him up two weight divisions. Munguia, I mean, a decent fighter, Munguia, but nowhere near on Canelo's level. And I mean, don't even get me started on Berlanga. I mean, we, we haven't actually seen the fight yet, but I don't think many of us are giving him much of a chance. With PBC, I think one thing you need to remember about PBC is that although they like doing things in-house, which they clearly do, I mean, at one stage of PBC, it was horrific. Does anyone remember in 2019 when PBC stop recognizing the wbo as a legit recognized world title do you remember that when terence crawford had it at 147 pounds and errol spence was getting ready for his unification with sean porter do you remember that 
where they actually stopped wrecking and that ended pretty quick considering they had fighters in their stable like Andy Ruiz who had the WBO title and rather than vacate it no no they didn't do that but they stopped recognizing it so they still paid sanctions to it but you know make that make sense that's PBC to cross the street stuff like that they always want to keep things in house with Canelo against Benavidez that's an in-house fight but they've never pushed for that now, they've never pushed for that again with Morel that would have been an in-house fight they never pushed for that and it didn't like that instead Canelo was being given carte blanche to go and if it is in-house they're bringing Charlo up from 155 and now he's fighting a golden boy fighter and then he's fighting a matchroom fighter so he's fighting and now they're and look no disrespect Munguia is better than Berlanga in my opinion but Munguia was a world champion 154 pounds did nothing at middleweight and is now at super middleweight so with the way PBC have been, they've given Canelo kind of carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wants. There's been seemingly no pressure put on him to fight the likes of Dave Benavidez, to fight the likes of Dave Morel, who are much more formidable opponents at 168 than the likes of Jaime Munguia, who came up from you know, middleweight and prior to that was at 154, and Edgar Berlanga, who, again, you know, he's got a bit of pop there, but, you know, he's very, very basic. And... You know, there's literally no kind of, you know, oh, Canelo. There's no push for them to really, it seems anyway, for them, him to fight any of his tough fighters. You know, Morel, Benavidez. There's no push for that. None, none whatsoever. So I can see why Canelo likes fighting there. Because he can milk his status as world champion at 168 pounds. He's not undisputed anymore. But he's able to do that. Put it on pay-per-view. Make an absolute king's ransom. And, you know, there's no kind of pushing from promoters or anyone to say, you know, we want to do this fight. Even then, if it's an in-house fight, let's do it. No, 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 none of that. And with PBC, although they, well, in that show they did in LA, they had PBC fighters like Dave Morrell, like Pitbull Cruz, fighting on a Saudi show. It doesn't seem like they're going to put much pressure on Canelo to start working with the Saudis. They're sort of from the outside looking in. So maybe that's why Canelo seems to quite like working with PBC and Al Heyman, in a sense of he can kind of keep it as the Canelo show, Whereas if he was to work with, say, an Eddie Hearn, a Bob Arum, a Frank Warren, a Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, how long before those promoters are trying to get Canelo to work with Turkey Al Sheikh at the Saudis? In which case, Canelo, as we've already seen, he likes having control. He likes being able to say, you know, I'm going to do this and you aren't going to dictate to me. Some like that, some don't. Some think that, well, Canelo's priced himself out of fights we want to see, and it certainly looks that way, but at the same time, you people who are saying, well, hang on a minute, Canelo is his own man, and he's not going to be dictated to by anybody, which, again, I mean, that's a, a good trait in of itself, to be fair. So, it's an interesting one. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Canelo Alvarez, do you think he's right? Do you think he would have done even better if he'd have been with PBC and Al Heyman at the start? I mean, certainly in PBC's prime years, they had a lot of good fighters, but how many good middleweights did they have? 154 pounders. I mean, their kind of whole thing when they started out was really the kind of welterweight scene, really. They had Floyd, they had Porter, they had, well, Spence was really on the come up then, but they did have Benzo Terman, Garcia, Danny Garcia, Manny Pacquiao even ended up signing with PBC, but that was kind of, that was more so their thing. And, and you got to bear in mind, that time, the heavyweight division, we were still coming to the end of the Klitschko era, was not good and it was really the welterweight division which was the kind of almost the premier division in boxing at the time because the heavyweight division we had fury we had joshua we had wilder but they weren't i mean like peak pbc you would probably say would be 14 to maybe 17 so we were coming out of the klitschko era into the current era of heavyweights but still it was the kind of floyds and stuff and floyd had retired in 2015 it was still kind of around that you know we were coming to the end of that era and, and into this one where pbc have done sweet fa really in comparison to the others so that's what canelo said there let me know your thoughts in the comment section below i hope you enjoyed the video people smash the like button if you could and subscribe of course you haven't already peace